This section is higher tier living things in their environment. For the higher tier paper, you need to know about the nitrogen cycle. 78% of the air is nitrogen. Nitrogen is an essential nutrient for plants and humans. You need to know how it's absorbed from the air and passed on by living things. Remember, we can't take in nitrogen directly from the air. Watch the next clip and make notes on how the nitrogen cycle works. The nitrogen stays put in the air and I get all I need from the food I eat. The same goes for moo cows and all other animals. They get the nitrogen they need from the food they eat. And in the cycle of things, it comes out here and in other places to enrich the soil with nitrate and ammonia. Lightning can and does fix a lot of nitrogen from the air. But as the nitrate is so soluble, it quickly gets washed away through the soil. And this has been the problem throughout evolution. Nitrogen is essential for all life, but too much will kill. So how does the inert nitrogen from the air get into the cycle of life and how is it kept in balance and control? A handful of hidden wealth. Some call it dirt. People talk about soiling their hand, but that's one of those precious resources on the face of this earth, living soil from the minerals, organic matter, and they're called crawling with life, worms and insects, mites and millipedes, and they're all doing a phenomenal job breaking down and cleaning up the soil and giving it structure. And there we can see the structure, little knobbly, crummy bits, and because they don't fit together, there are holes and channels and cavities, the perfect habitat for mega multi-billions of wonderful bacteria, the farmer's friend. Meet Nitrous Ammonas. Using nothing more than the energy of decay, he fixes nitrogen from the air and adds nitrate to the soil. Free fertilizer. Meet Pseudomonas, which does the opposite, releasing nitrogen back into the air. And you could fit millions of them on the head of a pin. Elementary botany, pretty boring stuff, but there's one family of the flowering plants you should all know about and you should learn to respect, and that's this, the pea flower family. Now, that very, very distinctive flower with its wings and its keel. If there's a flower like that on top of the plant, you can bet your bottom dollar that on the roots there are going to be dozens of these tiny nodules, inside which there are bacteria that have the ability to fix the nitrogen from the atmosphere and put it both into the plant and into the soil. Now, it's quite amazing that the whole success of the whole plant and animal kingdom all depends on those microorganisms. Perhaps it's because nitrogen is too poisonous that we leave it up to them to filter just enough into the living system. And here in the oasis, we can still see crop rotation going on. Cereals and cabbage, taking the nitrogen out, and then a crop of legumes, putting the nitrogen back in again. A checkerboard of success. Chemists had learnt the tricks of the nitrogen fixation trade. They'd learned to take nitrogen out of the air and turn it into ammonia, which is a compound of nitrogen. They then combined it with nitric acid to make nitrate fertiliser. So, electrical energy in lightning combines oxygen and nitrogen in the air to produce oxides of nitrogen, which are washed into the soil and are taken up by plants as nitrates. Bacteria in the root nodules of leguminous plants, like peas and beans, also fix nitrogen from the air and convert it into nitrogen compounds for the plants to use. Animals and humans get nitrogen by eating plants or other animals. Animal excretion returns nitrogen to the soil, and when animals and plants die, the nitrogen compounds in them go back into the cycle. The harbour process manufactures ammonia from the air, which makes fertilisers, which are added to the soil and taken up directly by plants.
That's the end of the biology section of this higher tier science programme.